Nature's telling me, I want to slow down. I want to slow down. Last night, I noticed a turkey, one of our little turkey poults, laying on its back. It didn't look right. I shoot it over to its side. It was just kind of lethargic. I talked to the beautiful one about it. She said, the breeder said, sometimes they'll just lay on their back and they can't get up. But I, I felt like something was a little different, but I left it. And sure enough, it was a little different. This guy was beyond just laying on his back. He's passed away. They said we'd lose half these turkeys. We've lost one out of 12. I would say that's pretty good. The breeder said we'd lose two or three. So if that's all we lose, we're good. It's to be expected. I would say 20% with, with turkeys, 10% with chickens. Yeah. It just becomes part of it. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Be gentle. See this milk stanchion right there? It's empty. It's empty this morning. It was empty yesterday morning. Let me explain. Willow gave birth to this guy, Norris, nine months ago. What do you think of him? Mr. Brown, you really want to see him. Yeah, isn't he a beauty? Thank you very much, Willow. Guys, and just in case you don't know, you gotta have a birth. A cow's gotta give birth in order for you to have milk. It's that birthing that gets the lactation process going. And once they calf here, we let the uh, mama and the calf be together for the first couple of days. She produces something called a colostrum, which uh, boosts his health or her health, whatever the calf is. Um, we grab a little bit of that colostrum. It's good for us too. And that can go for the first couple of days or even week. Willow, she produces a lot of col colostrum and it goes for a week. So after the first few days, we, uh, we do calf share. So we let the calf have the mama during the day. And then at night, we put them up in the stall together, but we tie them up in separate corners and put a gate between them. That way the mama doesn't stress out about it. Then the, but the calf's not milking, and that way the milk's built up so we can harvest that milk in the morning. And since that birth, this has been my office every morning around 6.30. This little red bucket, that's been my office chair right here at this stanchion. Milking willow. I had to do it whether it was cold, hot, rainy, clear, but I would come out here and I actually enjoyed the process of milking. Setting up, tearing down, not so much fun. Mucking, not so much fun. But the actual process of the milking was great. I, it, it's meditative, you're doing the same thing, you get good at, you're keeping your hand strength up. And I sort of miss it, but I did that for nine months, six days a week. But now nature's running its course. She's slowing down her milk production. She's giving me like two cups of milk a day. So she's telling me, nature's telling me, I want to slow down. I want to slow down. So why does she want to slow down? She wants to slow down because she's going to have a baby soon. She's going to put all her energies towards that. The, do, the calf is due in like August, so she's going to take three months to just build up her strength, uh, put all her resources toward that calf, and give us a wonder, wonderful, healthy birth. So that's going to be exciting. And I'll admit, it's sort of good because this cuts off 40 minutes of my chore time in the morning. And probably because bringing them in and, and mucking the stalls, 40 minutes in the afternoon. So it's, it's, that's what's cool about farming. Uh, if you farm this way in a natural way, you have ebbs and flows. You know, there's a rush in the spring. It slows down in the summer and then it gets real slow in the winter. And so you have these seasons that when you obey them, it's very, it's very uh, sustaining because you don't burn out. See, the guineas are out today, guys. Doing well. A quick update on those guineas. Um, we, we chased them. You guys saw that episode. It was a great one. We put them in their coop. We let them out the next morning. And they stayed there all day long. So we let them, we put them up at night. We let them out the next morning and they stayed there. The next day they got out. I guess it was yesterday. They did get out. Uh, and they, we had to catch them, round them up, put them in the stall. And it looks like they got out this morning. So maybe they got in the groove. Maybe they'll go up tonight. See the pastured poultry bin behind me? Yeah, that's got the mama hen and the little chicks, if you will, if you remember. Well, I got big plans for them. I got big goals. 
Well, one, we got to get them out of there because the Cornish Cross have got to go in there on Thursday. Can you believe the Cornish Cross are three weeks old on Thursday? Yeah, you guys got to get out of there. We got to get them out of there and put the Cornish Cross in. So what are my plans for Mama Hen? This thing. Harvey Estrie's A-frame. It's just what I have and it's a great coupe. But I'm not gonna put them right there in it. I'm gonna put them in here. It's easier if I can blend the entire flock together. This will be the little maternity reward for the chicks and the mamas. And this will be for the big girls. The A-frame will be in there. And it'll be interesting how we keep everyone together and happy and healthy. So that's the goal this week. Holy moly, I'm on the way to get some supplies and look at these blueberries coming in. Woo! So when we blend these guys together, my, ch my main challenge is keeping the big folks out of the little folks' feet. See, I like the free choice, the young growing ones, and I like to ration the, the older ones. So I've got to build a playpen that only the little guys can get in that the big girls, guys cannot get in. So let's get our supplies. Some tin, some two by twos. Oh, be careful, beauty. It's on. <laughs> this is precarious. Well, I don't want him to touch it. Okay. Oh, she got over. She's not going to leave you. I'll take you. She's got you. All right, and garden inspection, I guess. So this is the last crop garden that the chickens were on. We moved them out. We moved them over there. And we've got a lot of stuff coming in, guys. We got lettuce. We got melons. We got cucumbers. Look, the potatoes are not the only... Hey, I'm talking here, guys. Hey, we got a field pumpkin down in the mulch. Look how everything growing so much better down in the mulch. That's like double the size of what's growing up top. And Lord have mercy, the, the, the potatoes are still jamming. And the, uh, the, we did not plant this. This is a uh, lamb's quarter. But we can eat that. It's like a wild spinach. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be affecting the potatoes. Now we could come harvest some of this around the potatoes, which we might do, to feed it to our chickens, to maybe give the potatoes a little more breath, but it doesn't look like they need it. No, it's actually not up around the potato bottoms. Okay, cool. So it's a nice undercover. Oh, look, a ladybug, Lily. Look, a ladybug. That's a really good sign. Look, Let's see the ladybug. Look at the ladybug. Sunflowers are coming up. So there's no corn coming up that I can see. Maybe it's late starting. Maybe it got got by the crows. But we do have pumpkins. We do? Oh yeah. yeah. They're oh jamming. Gosh. Know that. Uh, this one. Whoa. I was watering the plants, the new starts in the greenhouse, and I noticed that it looked like Justin had planted all the seeds in one spot. And then upon further inspection, the seeds didn't look right. So check it out. So there's no seeds down here. Well, there's a couple here and there. There's no seeds over here. So it looks as though we have a mouse. It's getting our seeds. Look at, um, this is the spaghetti squash. And as you can see, there's no seeds in the spaghetti squash. Mice must love spaghetti squash. They love the acorn. Oh, there's a couple, but I don't even think, I think that they were accidentally left behind. I don't even know if they're gonna sprout. And they also love the zucchini seeds. And for all you people giving me a hard time about the two, T-O-O -O, and the two, T-O, I, I didn't do good in English, I'll admit it. I was more of a math girl. I enjoyed math, I excelled in math. Um, and I guess we should have just Googled it, but we were just so focused on getting done that we messed up. I guess we're gonna mess up, we're not perfect. Oh boy, is the fence on? I see you guys eyeing these fresh plants. Back off.
Look at what we got. It's okay, buddy.